Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Alexandra Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist of 15 years. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you've been dealing with painful bumps under your arms, under your breasts, maybe in the groin, you might be dealing with a condition called hydronitis superativa. If you've been dealing with painful bumps like under your arms, under your breasts, maybe in your groin that come and go, maybe they leave behind some scarring, you might be dealing with a condition called hydronitis superativa or short HS. It's underdiagnosed and very common condition and actually most of the time you might be diagnosed with just boils in those area and not even know that you have the condition. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through what HS is, why it happens, how dermatologists diagnose it, and what are some of the things that we use to treat it. Some are over the counter and some are prescription. If this sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're into science-backed skincare and dermatology tips, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hydronitis superativa is a chronic inflammatory skin condition where we get these boils under the arms, in the groin, under the breast. This condition is more common than you would think, and you might initially just start with a few bumps here and there, and it's not until you realize that you're getting the same bumps in the same spots over and over again. The bumps that come up in the area are very painful, they're deep, they're almost like nodular, they look like boils, and they're lesions that can rupture and drain. Sometimes they have foul odor associated with it. Often under these boils, there are tunnels or sinus tracts that are connecting them to each other. So if one pops, it might drain through another site under that arm or under the area. There's often scarring and skin thickening associated with this condition. And it typically occurs in areas where there's friction, like underarms, groin, and under the breast. I've also seen it in the buttocks and inner thighs. And before you say, I'm doing something wrong, this is infection, it is not infection. It can look like one, but this is not an infection. And if you're somebody who suffers with these boils, it is not your fault. You did not do anything to cause this. Hydronitis superativa is thought to be caused by follicular occlusion. So if you have a hair follicle, this hair follicle becomes backed up. It gets clogged with dead skin cells, and this causes inflammation under the hair follicle. And combine that with friction because it's more common in the friction area. This leads to these big nodules that can rupture and create inflammation and draining of that inflammatory response. So you might say, okay, I have this, why does it happen? Okay, number one, and I hate to blame it on your parents, but it tends to run in families. It's not genetically inherited, it just tends to run in same families. Sometimes it can be hormonal related because we don't see it in kids, but then we see it when puberty kicks in and hormones start kicking in. Obesity, weight, and friction 100% play a role here. The more friction you have in the area, the more likely you are to develop those spots and for them to rupture and drain and be painful and uncomfortable. Smoking is one thing you can change. Smoking has a strong association with the severity of disease. So just because you smoke doesn't mean you have it, but if you have this and you smoke, you stopping smoking may decrease how often you get the boils and how painful they are. And immune system dysregulation is another component because this is an inflammatory condition, similar in some ways to acne and Crohn's disease, immune system does play a role. But one thing that does not play a role here is poor hygiene. Hygiene has nothing to do with this condition happening. Hydronitis is also not contagious. So you're not contagious to anyone and you don't have this because you're not washing very well. This is not your fault. So how's it diagnosed and do you really have it? You don't need a biopsy to diagnose this. A diagnosis is usually clinical, meaning a dermatologist can often just kind of look at it and identify it based on recurring painful bumps in those characteristic areas, under the arms, under the breast, in the groin, buttocks, inner thighs, and things like that. The lesions that appear are typically chronic in nature. They have, there's usually a history of this has been happening over time. It's not the patient that comes and says, I have one boil and never had this before that I'm gonna diagnose with hydronitis. Most of the time these patients come in and say, I've had these off and on for years. My doctor has drained and put me on antibiotics, but they keep coming back. And then on exam, I'll see typically these little scars where the spots used to be, but the classic sign for diagnosing is the presence of those sinus tracts or scarring underneath the skin. If there's no inflammatory spots whatsoever, a good dermatologist will still spot this diagnosis by seeing those sinus tracts and opening at each end of the tract. But there's no single test that's gonna diagnose this. It's very, very clinical. But if you've had one or two boils in the same area, it's really important to see a dermatologist and get the diagnosis early because there's so much that can be done early on in the management to prevent it from getting worse. And you'd be surprised how many patients I have that have this condition and you wouldn't know. You could see them at the gym, you would see them at the store. You would not know they have this because they caught it early and they're managing it. HS is a chronic condition. So that means it can be cured, 
but it can be managed. And treatment really depends on severity. We have several different categories and stages, if you will, but in general, it can be mild, moderate, or severe. And treatments include everything from gentle topicals that can be over the counter, maybe prescription topicals or orals, to biologic treatments. So let's get into those a little bit. For really mild hydradenitis, and to me this is somebody who's just getting those bumps or has maybe had a few bumps in one area, you might think you have this, you might not even have it yet, but in this category I'm gonna to mention topicals over the counter that can be used even if you don't 100% have diagnosis, but you think you might have this condition. First one is a benzoyl peroxide cleanser. This comes over the counter anywhere from four to 10%, so CeraVe acne foaming wash comes in four and 10%. If you're somebody with sensitive skin, consider starting with 4%, but for like back acne or maybe the buttocks areas, the 10% might work better. Another recommendation for over-the-counter wash is Hibiclens wash. Now this one can be a little bit drying. It should never be used on the face. You may even wanna consider diluting this down and using it as a dilute wash in the shower. For example, if you get a foaming bottle dispenser just on Amazon and you fill it one part Hibiclens wash and three parts water, you can use that as a foaming wash a couple times a week for those areas. On the other nights, I would use the benzoyl peroxide wash. Of note, benzoyl peroxide can bleach towels, so make sure your towel is something you don't care about very much. Now, if you see your family doctor or dermatologist and it's really, really mild, we may wanna consider something like a topical clindamycin. This is a very gentle antibiotic. It does not irritate skin at all, but it does work best when combined with either benzoyl peroxide or Hibiclens. There's pretty high resistance to clindamycin by itself without benzoyl peroxide or Hibiclens on board, so make sure you have one of those cleansers with it. If your condition is more advanced, we may wanna consider oral antibiotics like doxycycline or sometimes even a combination of clindamycin and rifampin. These antibiotics here are not used as an antibiotic definition, if you will, because this is not infectious. We're not trying to kill any type of infection here or eliminate any sort of infection. We're using antibiotic agents here as an anti-inflammatory. Any antibiotic can be used at a higher dose to eliminate infection or at a lower dose to minimize inflammation, such as with acne or hydratinitis. Another really good oral agent, especially for my female patients, is oral spironolactone or oral contraceptives. We actually prescribe oral spironolactone quite a bit for hair loss, hormonal acne, and hydradenitis. It works as an anti-androgen, blocks some of those hormones that contribute to producing oil and clogging the pores. And another, probably my last resort, oral systemic agent that's prescription would be acetretin or isotretinoin, also known by name of Accutane. I have used this several times in patients who also had acne by itself. I don't find that it works as well well just for hydradenitis, particularly considering that it tends to be a chronic ongoing condition and isotretinoin works while you're taking it and then maybe several months afterwards, but then it tends to come back. So I have used this in the past. It has worked well for some of my younger patients who also had severe acne at the same time, but it's not something that we go to straight. And if your hydradenitis is severe, we do have biologic agents. For example, we have adalimumab or humirab, we have bimekizumab or bimzelix, and we have secukinumab or cosyntix. All three of these are FDA approved for treatment of hydradenitis. Of note, they've been on the market for quite some time for the treatment of psoriasis, but HS dosing tends to be a little bit different, so they have FDA approval for that. They can significantly reduce flares and inflammation. We do require some blood work, so make sure it was discussed with your dermatologist prior to starting this medication. Also, it will be very very dependent on your medical history and other conditions you may have if you go this route and if so which one of these you pick. And another option for treatment are procedures like intralesional kenalog or intralesional steroid injections. We use this quite a bit actually. It alleviates the pain. I will often mix lidocaine numbing medication with a steroid so it provides immediate relief from the lidocaine, but the steroid in that injection also provides somewhat of a longer lasting relief from pain and swelling because it helps decrease the inflammation underneath. This is intralesional, meaning it's done just into that lesion itself. And if we go back to why does hydronitis happen to begin with, and we talk about that follicular occlusion, if you can eliminate the amount of hair that you have in the area, that would help significantly in the amount of flares that you get. So laser hair removal, which really is permanent laser hair reduction, can reduce the hair follicles and the size of hair follicles, therefore, it will reduce the inflammation that you get and minimize your HS flares. Laser hair removal works really, really well and it can benefit patients significantly in minimizing the flares. Again, doesn't cure the condition, but it can minimize the flares significantly. And keep in mind that laser hair removal is not permanent, it's permanent laser hair reduction. So it permanently minimizes the size of the hair follicles, the thickness of the hair, and how much hair you have in general, therefore less flares. 
The last resort here, and I have had several patients do this, is the surgical removal of those sinus tracts, and that's reserved for really, really severe cases. This is typically something that's done by general surgery, not dermatology, and it does require a somewhat of a prolonged healing time. Now, it's important to understand that because this is chronic condition, you're not going to go see your dermatologist and get your prescriptions and do it for a while, and this is going to go away. You're also not going to hopefully take that antibiotic forever and ever because that's not safe, good for your microbiome or your gut flora. So it's important to know some of the tips that you can use on every day. Maybe you're somebody who just works out a lot. Maybe you wear tight clothing. Maybe you smoke. Maybe there's a lot of friction. Maybe you're not using the antibacterial body wash like you should be to minimize this. So here are some tips for every day like day-to-day -day care if you suffer from either hydradenitis or you tend to get those occluded hair follicles in those areas where there's friction like your underarms, under the breasts, buttocks, or maybe even the groin area. Tip number one, wear loose, really breathable clothing. If you wear things like tight jeans and you sit for prolonged periods of time at work, that is absolute worst thing you can do for hydradenitis. Next thing, shaving. It sounds great, right? You wanna get rid of the hair, but when you shave the top of the hair, you just open up that hair follicles to more skin cells setting in there, and there's higher risk of that becoming a nodule or a boil and getting inflamed and your HS worsening. Next, you wanna use gentle cleanser, but you want something that won't irritate your skin, but also minimize the amount of bacteria that's in those skin cells. So we talked about benzoyl peroxide. I would really start with the CeraVe 4% acne foaming wash for this because it's really, really gentle on the skin. If you have already used this or it bleaches your towels and it bothers you or it's not working for you, chlorhexidine or hibiclins can also be beneficial, but consider diluting it down and never ever use it near your face. And the last thing that might be helpful for every day is keeping like a diary to track flares and potential triggers. We know smoking is one of those, so you know maybe eliminate that if you can. It would be very, very beneficial, not just for hydradenitis, but so many other conditions and just for our body. But maybe you're flared by dairy, maybe you're not. I'm not saying dairy is a culprit. We actually have no data that it is. But if there's a certain food that you eat every day and it tends to promote inflammation in you, then you may wanna consider eliminating it. So please remember that hydradenitis is more than just painful skin bumps. It's a chronic inflammatory condition that deserves expert care and support. If you think you have hydradenitis, make sure you see a dermatologist early because there's so many treatment options that we can give you to help prevent the progression, to reduce those flares, and improve your quality of life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or anything else, drop your comments below. I'll answer as many as I can. Also, if you have topic suggestions, make sure you drop those below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown. Thanks for watching.